Welcome to the International Dermoscopy Society podcast series, and it is my pleasure to present on Dermoscopy Beyond the Second Dimension. So how can the ink of a pen highlight the third dimension? I'll give a few examples. The first one will deal with lesions on the palms and soles. We know that it's important to differentiate whether the pigmentation is confined to the furrows or to the ridges of the dermatoglyphics. When pigmentation is confined to the furrows, is indicative of a benign lesion, or nevus, and, what's, and when it's confined to the ridges, it is suggestive of a malignancy. But sometimes it's difficult to tell whether the pigmentation is in the furrows or ridges, as exemplified here. So what one can do is take um, gentian violet, the surgical marking pen, mark up the lesion, wipe off the excess ink, and what you will left will be left with is pigmentation that highlights the ridges. So, um, so basically there'll be pigment on each side highlighting the ridge with the eccrine uh, gland also highlighted. And that is very nicely shown here. So you can see this is the ridge with the eccrine glands opening on the ridge and you follow that and there's no pigmentation here. There's another ridge, no pigmentation. You follow the furrow, and there's the pigmentation. So this is a benign parallel furrow pattern nevus. The second example to highlight the importance of ink is to, is to basically uh, use it to highlight sulci and comedo-like openings to help make the diagnosis of a seborrheic keratosis. Here are two pigmented lesions that can easily be confused for melanocytic neoplasm, but if you put the ink on and wipe off the excess ink, then you can highlight the comedos. You can also highlight the, um, the sulci that uh, accentuates the cerebroform pattern. So in the two lesions that I have just shown you, this is what they look like after the ink is wiped off. So here you can see the cerebroform pattern, and in this lesion you can see the comedo-like openings confirming that both of these lesions are indeed seborrheic keratosis. Another place where you can use ink is to highlight the coronoid lamella in porokeratosis, as is shown here. The second uh, part of um, the third dimension is to use dermoscopy to actually move the lesion uh, in uh, back and forth. And there I will um, give two examples of this. So first, let's concentrate on the fibrillar pattern. The fibrillar pattern can be seen both in nevi and in melanoma. And in fact, the fibrillar pattern often leads to a biopsy even when the fibrillar pattern is regular because of the concern of missing a melanoma. But let's go back and take a look at why we see a fibrillar pattern. The reason has to do with weight bearing, uh, lesions on weight-bearing surfaces of the feet. And if you have pigmentation in the epidermis that is growing up into the epidermis and then enters the stratum corneum, then the, uh, the places where the stratum corneum has shearing forces, the stratum corneum grows at an angle, and that pigmentation will then uh, have a fibrillar-type pattern when viewed um, on horizontal view. So if there was a way to push the stratum corneum back, then we can take a fibrillar pattern and convert it to a parallel furrow pattern, um, helping to know that it's benign. And that is basically where dermoscopy comes in. You can put the dermatoscope on the lesion and push it uh, in the direction opposite to the frictional forces. Um, you can also do this with what's known as oblique view dermoscopy, where you're looking at the lesion at an oblique angle, and instead of seeing the fibrillar pattern, you actually see that the pigmentation is in the furrows. But in, an easier way is to just put the scope on, push the scope against frictional forces, and this fibrillar pattern lesion actually uh, becomes a parallel furrow pattern, and you can be reassured that the lesion is benign. And then the third major point is what we call the wobble sign, which is um, pushing the scope on the lesion and then moving the scope back and forth to see whether the lesion wobbles or slides. And this was published in this article that I'll refer you to. And so a lesion that um, wobbles is indicative of a, a dermal process, so like an intradermal nevus, and a lesion that slides is an epidermal process. So you can tell the difference between dermal and, and epidermal uh, lesions. But just as importantly, uh, you can also use the wobble test to see the undersurface of a pedunculated or sessile lesion, and that's shown here in this 
pedunculated papule. When you use the wobble te test, you can see the uh, undersurface and you see the shiny white lines and vessels, um, helping you to diagnose this melanoma arising in an intradermal nevus. And lastly, don't ignore the superficial. Uh, we know that uh, it's difficult sometimes to tell the difference between basal cell carcinoma and intradermal nevi uh, on the face. And uh, that was also highlighted in this article where intradermal nevi were often confused with basal cell carcinomas and vice versa. And uh, one clue to help differentiate the two is to look at the skin markings. Uh, basal cell carcinomas tend to have loss of skin markings and appear shiny. Uh, this is nothing new. Uh, it has been known that skin markings can help differentiate benign from malignant uh, since the late 1800s. Uh, but now we have the ability to use linear polarized light to accentuate the uh, superficial skin markings. So currently we use polarized light, cross polarized light uh, to see uh, the dermoscopy structures below the stratum corneum and with linear polarized light you're accentuating just the top layer of the skin and this is, is shown here this intradermal nevus seen with linear polarized light the skin markings are more conspicuous than the same lesion seen with non-polarized light and what we have found um, is that basal cell carcinomas do indeed have a shiny surface with loss of skin markings whereas intradermal nevi retain their skin markings so awareness of the third dimensional will improve the clinician's diagnostic accuracy, which in turn will impact their benign to malignant ratio. I hope you found this podcast interesting, and I'm wishing you a peaceful and a wonderful day.